Hi there, Michael Fudge here. In this video, I will demonstrate another end-to-end -end example. This one will be a program that simulates a login process, such as entering your PIN code into an ATM. Remember, in the end-to-end -end example series, we will solve real-world problems with our code. I'll demonstrate how to approach the problem and devise a plan and then execute that plan in code. It's designed to give you a complete picture of how to go from problem to solution with your Python. In this example, the contents will be based on Lesson 5, which covers iterations like the while loop and for loop. Iterations allow us to write code that repeats until a condition is no longer true. Like all end-to-end -end examples, I will write the program organically. I'm not going to write this program in a single step. I'm going to take several passes at it. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to learn from them. I'm going to revise my code until I get a solution. There's going to be very little editing in the video, and that's by design. For this example, I'm going to code in Jupyter Notebook again. You can see it up on my screen already. You're welcome to code along with me. This code can be found on GitHub at this URL. And of course, if you're a student taking IST256 already, you have this code on your computer. All right, let's get started. What I really like about this end-to-end -end example is it's very difficult to conceive how to write the final product because there's so many different cases for this program. Let's kind of identify what's going on here. Initially, there's going to be some kind of password. My favorite password. This is the one that all my web banking is done with that password, so I'm going to write it down. And you can see that we have some rules here. It says you have five attempts for the password. On correct password, print access granted, then end the program. On incorrect password, print invalid password attempt number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and give the user another try. And then finally, after five attempts, print, you are locked out. So this is very similar to how a, a, an automated teller machine or ATM would work, where you punch in your pin, and if you punch in your pin too many times, it takes your card. If you punch in your pin correctly, it gives you feedback and says, all right, now you're at the main menu. So we're going to simulate that. So let's think about this program, and I, I really don't know how to solve this problem immediately. So what I'm going to do is just try to write a simpler version of it. And, the, and this simpler version, it's just going to ask for a password. If the password you type is rhubarb, it's going to stop and say, hey, you know, access granted. So let me think about this through some pseudocode. Normally, I would write this down on pencil and paper, but I don't have that, so I'm just going to do it right here. Enter a password. If your password entered is rhubarb, I should say is the password. Right, in this case, my password's rubber, but whatever. We're gonna print access granted. Uh, otherwise, we're going to print invalid password attempt. All right. I have no idea if this is exactly what I want. I don't even know if this is gonna take me in the right direction to solve the problem. All I know is that it's something and I can work with something. I can't work with nothing. Let's write our code. I'm going to actually write my code in the cell below. I'm going to write my pseudocode up here, then I'll write my code down here. So let's handle the first case, your input, enter your password. All right, I'm going to do this now. This line of code is what I'm, this line of pseudocode is what I'm doing now. So if your input equals password print access granted how about a couple exclamation marks for joy else print invalid password attempt number one all right let's give this a go and see what we get here so i'm going to run it enter your password Invalid password attempt number one. Let me run it again and enter rhubarb. Access granted. Okay, so far so good. Now, in the event that I enter an invalid password, I want to go back up here and ask them to enter another password. So in order to do this, I need a loop. All right, so this is a kind of the point of this week's lesson is how can you take code and repeat that code, right? Now this code, doesn't always repeat, right? Because once we find out that your access was granted, uh, we don't need a loop anymore, right? But it's in the loop because we need to check to see if what you if what you entered equals 
the magic password there. Okay. So all this stuff, I'm going to try and stick it in a loop. So do I know how many times I'm going to loop? Yes, five times. So I could use a deterministic loop like four, because right? I know I'm going to loop five times. So I could do something like this, four attempts in range zero, five. That will loop five times, zero, one, two, three, four. That's what that range does. If I want to loop five times, one, two, three, four, five, I can do it like this. So that's one way to implement your loop is with the for loop. You can also implement the loop uh, with a while loop, but then you have to keep tr con um, control over attempts manually. So I could do it either way. Or maybe I'll start with a four and I'll change it to a while later. Yeah, that works. So all these things need to be indented like that, right? Because I want to loop five times, and then I'm going to ask for your input, check your input, and then say access granted, and then otherwise print invalid password attempt. Now I'm not going to say one every time here. I'm going to say percent %d. And then I want to put attempts in here because attempt will be a different number between one and five every time through this loop. So let's give it a shot, see what we get here. And your password, invalid password attempt one. Okay, so we fell down here. And because it's indented, it jumps back up to the for loop. Now attempts is number two. Invalid password attempt number two, see that? So our loop is looping. And then let's try three, four, five, and then it stops. Now, in the event that the program stops, we want to say you're locked out, right? Because I think that's what it's set up here. After five attempts, print, you are locked out. All right, so I might do that up here. I might say, okay, this now lines up with that for loop, right? Which means this is looping, and then this is the next line. Turn line numbers on. Line eight is a line that occurs when the for loop is done. So I might say print, you are locked out. Okay, and then we'll run it again. Let's just try it again. Bad password, bad password, bad password, bad password, bad password, you are locked out. Awesome, so I'm getting there, right? Because it says after five attempts, print you're locked out. I did that, okay? On incorrect password, printing value number of attempts, I did that. I get five attempts for the password, I did that. Now let's see if it works with access granted. That's one thing I didn't try, so let's give that a whirl. Enter your password, whoops, and then it says access granted, cool. Oh, now it's asking me for a password again. See what happens here is as if the password matches rhubarb, print access granted, then where does this line of code go? It goes down to the end of the block, and then it goes right back up here and does the next for loop. So it's gonna keep doing this. Doesn't matter how many times I enter rhubarb, it's gonna keep doing it. And then when you're done, it prints you are locked out. So that's not good. So this is where the, the, the break command comes in. What break does, Break is a command that says exit the loop. So when you think about this, if what you typed matches your password, you want to tell them, hey, that's a great password. And then you immediately want to break from the loop. And then when you break, you'll go down to line nine, which is probably not what we want, right? Let's run it. I type in rhubarb. I press enter, it says access granted, and then it says you are locked out. Why does it say I'm locked out? Because this print statement here occurs right after the for loop. What you wanna do is you only wanna run this print statement when you know you were, locked, you were not locked out, right? There's two ways you can fall down the line nine. Either you go through the for loop five times or you hit this break. Those are the two ways you can reach line nine. So now I have to do some kind of logic here to figure this out. Like one thing I could do is I could check my attempts. I could say if attempts is equal to five, then the, I know I got here because I was locked out. I know I'm here on line nine because 
I made it through five attempts, and then therefore I should only print this under that circumstance. I should not print access grant. I should not print it when I only go after one attempt and access is granted. So let's try it. Enter your password. Access granted. It did not print you are locked out because it was not five attempts. It was one attempt. Let's try it again. Enter your password. You are locked out because attempts is five. Cool. So that's the whole program, right? Did I solve the entire program? That was pretty good. So five attempts for the password, I did that. On correct password, access granted, then end the program, I did that. On incorrect password, invalid password attempt number, and then give user another try, I did that. After five attempts print, you are locked out, I did that. And there's the whole code. Turn the line numbers back on. And there's the whole code. So a couple of things. There is a very unique structure in the Python world where if you use a for loop or a while loop, you can put an else after it like this. And when you look at this, the first thing you think is, what? But let me show you how it works. So I'm going to run this. And then we're going to put in rhubarb. And then it just says access granted. The only time the else happens is when this loop runs its course. So if this for loop goes through all five numbers, it will do this. So it's exactly the same as what I had here. Okay, let's verify that. Put it back. Let's run it. One, two, three, four, five, you are locked out. Bingo. So that's very useful. So again, you can strap an else onto the while loop or the for loop. And the way it works is when the loop finishes naturally in the for loop or when the while condition becomes false in the while loop, the else will happen. Anytime you hit a break in the middle of the while loop, it will skip the else because you, you exited the loop, as we say, unnaturally. If you exit it naturally, it's when the for loop runs its course, goes through all the numbers of the while loop exit condition, becomes false. Okay, that's number one. Number two is how can I write this as a while loop? So another way to think about this, rather than think about it in terms of a number of attempts, is, you know, which makes sense because a for loop uses deterministic. We know you're looping five times. Let's suppose, you know, we can loop any number of times, right? And I'm going to say attempts up here, max attempts. is five, right? And then attempts is zero. And then I'm going to use a while loop instead. And I'm going to use what's called the infinite loop pattern. So in the infinite loop pattern, what you do is you just say while true, while true like that. And then you think of all the reasons that you might stop looping. And for every one of those reasons, you have an if statement and a break. So for example, you know, get your input, if you typed in the right thing, access granted, break. I don't need an else now. What I'm gonna say is if, oh, I'm sorry. You type in your input, then I need to raise attempts now because I don't have a for loop. So I need to say attempts equals attempts plus one. That's one attempt, right? So you type in your password, that's one attempt. Did you type in the right password? then print access granted, quit the loop. If your attempts equal your max attempts, if your attempts equal your max attempts, then I wanna print your locked out, right? Print your locked out and break. And then I don't even need an else because if you make it here, right? Let's think this through here. So, you know, you type in the right thing, access granted, break. Your attempts matches the maximum number of attempts, you're locked out, stop looping. If you fall down here, then you didn't type the right password in and you're not at the maximum number of attempts, so print out invalid password in how many attempts you did. All right, let's run this. And your password, oops. Max, oh, I fat-fingered something here. 
max attempts. I'm going to copy it because that's how sloppy I am. There we go. It just doesn't look right, but whatever. All right, let's see if that works. Enter your password. Oop, I still don't have it right. Max. Let me just show it max because I can't spell. There, that looks better. All right, let me try it again. There we go. It really helps when you know how to spell, you know? And then on the fifth attempt, it says you're locked out. Again, the loop works the same way, except in, under this pattern, what I'm saying is, let's just loop. Okay, while true says, just loop forever. And then what I'm gonna do is handle every single condition under which I would stop looping with an if. So while true, enter your password, increase the number of attempts. That was my first attempt, for example. Hey, did you type in the right password? Then access granted and then quit the loop. Hey, are the number of attempts equal to the maximum number of attempts? Then print, hey, you're locked out and quit the loop. Otherwise, tell them that they didn't enter their password correctly and they used an attempt and then go back up here and do it again. Okay, that's it for our password attempt program. Hopefully you learned a lot about how to use the for loop and the while loop and how to build a program that uses a loop. Remember, the big thing about a loop is having conditions that stop the loop. And in this example, we had two conditions. You had one of these where the password matches or the other one when you exceeded five attempts. That's it. We'll see you later. Bye now.